Hey all and thanks for joining us on this Paranormal Pit Stop. Tonight, we'll be taking a look at a historic home placed off Olvera Street in Los Angeles, California that holds the title of being the eldest standing residence within the age-old city. Acting as part of the California State Historic Park, the Los Angeles Plaza Historic District, and rumored to hold a range of ghostly infestations, are you ready to brave the history and hauntings of the Avila Adobe? Historically, this humble abode was first constructed in 1818 by Francisco Avila. Though this early building was nearly twice as long as our current adobe and boasted an L shape with a wing that extended to where the center of Olvera Street now lies. In 1827, the famous trailblazer Jedediah Smith would bunk down at the adobe for a time. After having led a group of fur trappers across the Mojave to Southern California, marking the first U.S. citizens to reach Alta from the east by way of an overland route. Sadly, Francisco would pass on on April 5th of 1832. In 1846, the U.S. would declare war on Mexico, and while the widow of Vila would vacate the property to avoid fighting and would place a young boy in charge of keeping its windows and doors locked up. In 1847, American troops would lure the house's small guardian out and would commandeer the residence as a temporary headquarters. In 1850, Avila's youngest daughter, Francisca, would marry one Theodore Rimpau, and the widow Avila would remain on site until her death in 1855, after which Francisca and Theodore would reside in the adobe until 1868, when it began to fall into disrepair. Through the following years, the home would be rented to various family members. For a time, it would act as a boarding house. In 1870, a large earthquake would cause heavy damages to the structure, and in 1928, the city of Los Angeles would condemn the property. Upon hearing of the adobe's condemnation, concerned resident Christine Sterling would set out on a mission to locate its owner, who just so happened to be a Rimpau and a direct descendant of the original owner, after which she would gain permission to rent the site, would launch massive fundraising efforts, and would buy the property outright before setting to work on restorations. Christine would reside on site while hosting group and student tours, and while the state of California would acquire the Avila Adobe in 1953 as part of its El Pueblo de Los Angeles State Historic Park, Ms. Sterling would remain in the home until her passing in 1963. In 1971, the Silmar earthquake would result in major damages to the adobe, requiring it be closed down for a five-year restoration project, during which time a new structure would be added to its back as a memorial to Christine Sterling, and in 1976, the expanse would reopen for tours. The Avila Adobe remains in operation into the present, standing as a historic house museum with seven remaining rooms, and accommodates countless annual visitors, school groups, and the like. Quite classically, this aged house is rumored to be haunted by the spirits of its former owners and by the souls of the many who enjoyed its comforts in life, and those who have frequented its bounds have reported orbs in the backgrounds of photography, doors that open and close by themselves, objects sighted moving on their own, and furniture found rearranged overnight. Several informal investigations of the property have yielded high EMF levels and chilling EVPs, and many braving it have described footsteps heard from empty spaces, the disembodied sounds of children's laughter, the commotion of a party heard emanating from just out of sight, and encounters with both shadowy figures and full-bodied apparitions in clothing spanning the eras, thought to be the spirits of various family members or acquaintances. Lastly, the apparition of a woman believed to be that of the widow of Vila, Encarnacion, has been spied sitting in the rocking chair on the front porch, and has also been heard crying from the master bedroom when it's supposed to be empty, and the spirit of Francisco himself has been encountered within the home as well as throughout the historic plaza, seemingly keeping an eye over the locale he so loved in life. Thanks for tuning in for this Paranormal Pit Stop. If you enjoyed our histories and ghost stories, go ahead and subscribe to our channel, throw us a like, and share us with anyone you feel could use a good scare. We'll catch you next time.